Occasionally we wind up with a character that is what we call non-standard. Now Paragon Rampage here is definitely non-standard. He has fewer fingers and toes than the standard person. Now we're going to take this FBX that we have of him and we're going to drag and drop it into the 3D Exchange interface. Make sure Import Animation and Adjust Material Color is turned off and then click OK. Your character is going to appear in the center of the screen and you can see right away why he's considered non-standard. He only has three fingers and three toes. On the right side of your viewport, you're going to see the character menu. We're going to click Convert to Non-Standard. Now it's going to ask you if it's okay to rename duplicate nodes. Click Yes. On the right side of the screen here, let's change our bone size from 5 to 10 so we can see our skeleton a little easier. To view your character, you can use the middle row of keyboard keys, the letter A through K. This will switch to different views. And you can use the left mouse button to pan, the middle scroll wheel to zoom, and the right mouse button to rotate around your character. On the right hand side of your viewport, you're going to see a load T-pose button. We're going to click on this and load a pre-made T-pose for this character. We could have manually adjusted the arms, but I want to show you how to load a preset T-pose. And of course, you always have the option to save your own T-poses as well. And here's what our character looks like with the T-pose. Now, typically in a T-pose, we also want the head facing forward. So we're going to make some adjustments here because he's looking down slightly. So we're going to select this area here. Make sure I have the head selected on the left and then go to Rotate Object, which is the E. Now the goal here is to adjust his head so his face is facing forward. With this joint selected, I can go over here to the right and adjust it numerically. You also have the option to select the neck joints here, either on the character itself or on the left hand side of your interface. And I'm just selecting neck underscore one and neck underscore two and adjusting it so it looks normal and relaxed and facing forward for the face. Now that we have him properly posed, let's tell 3D Exchange which joints to use. So I'm going to click here on the head. Now let's go over here to the left and select the head joint. You'll notice that it turns green in the center interface. Now let's do the pelvis as well. I clicked it on the right, and now I'm going to find the pelvis on the left hand side. Next on the right, we're going to click the base of the spine, and then click it on the figure in the center. Now I'm going to do the right thigh and select the right thigh. Next is the right lower leg. Select it on the right and then select it on the character. Now I'm going to select the foot and select the foot on the character. Now we just repeat the steps for the left leg. Now we're going to select the right upper arm, the right lower arm, and the right hand. And again, we'll do the same thing on the left arm. Selecting these matching joints allows us to characterize this character. By clicking this active checkbox here, we can test what we've done so far. By going to the drop down menu here on the right side of the interface, we can select various motions. Just hit the preview button to play the test motion. There are a few that you can select to see how your character is coming along. Now you'll see if we try to do the finger calibration that we're not getting any movement in the hands. Let's select the T pose and hit preview to put him in his default pose and then turn off the active checkbox. Let's click the down arrow here next to the right hand and you'll see a template show up showing the fingers. Now we can retarget the fingers. I'm going to select the base of the thumb and then select it on the character and again with the next joint on the thumb. Continuing with the index finger. And then finally we'll use the pinky. Now we'll click the arrow to go up and then select the left hand and repeat the process. Now just remember to do the same thing that you did with the right hand so that both sides match. After you've assigned the pinky, we're going to click that up arrow again to get back to the main body template on the right. Let's select the spine and pick the joints that represent the spine as we go up the character. Then we'll pick the shoulder blades before we move up the body, go to the neck. Now the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is select all the neck joints and assign them to the proper location. Once you have all the neck joints properly assigned, then it's a simple matter to click the active checkbox again and test your character. 
and you do it the exact same way we did before. Just select a motion and hit preview. The included test motions are specifically designed to allow you to make sure that your character moves well in a variety of situations. So feel free to try them all out. Make sure that your character is moving the way that you want it to. I'm going to run him through one or two more motions. Let's check the fingers first. Our fingers are doing well. So we'll do one more test and then we're going to convert this character. Seems to be doing well, so I'm just going to hit convert. And now we have this character set. The last thing we need to do is go to File Export and export it out for iClone. So we'll go to File, Export. Make sure that it's set to iClone 7. We've got our name, we've got our texture size, and hit OK. Knowing how to bring non-standard characters into iClone is a powerful skill to have. Now you can use this in any application, including Unreal.